This is Will Nunziata, New York City-based director and creator of theater, television, and film. And today I am thrilled to be speaking with the acclaimed author, Rod Van Blake. Hello, Rod. How are you? Hello, Will. How are you doing? Great. Rod, doing so much better now that we're finally talking with one another. You are an incredible author, and I want to deep dive into it all. I want to know, first and foremost, Rod, where you were born and when your love of writing began. Was it from when you were just a little kid? Uh, no, I was born in Rochester, New York. Um, and I was raised in Chicago and I didn't really start writing until later in life, a lot later in life, let's say, uh, but yeah, I've always loved to read, um, science fiction and fantasy stories. And it got to a point where I had read so many of them. I got curious to, to see whether if I could write one or not. So actually that's, that's kind of how it started. I love it. Well, I want you to talk a little bit about first and foremost, ancient illumination and how, those volumes, one published in 2020, one published in 2021, all came about for you. Well, yeah, the first one was published in 2016. Oh, I'm sorry. That's all good. The, yeah, this one is 2016, 2018, 2020, the third book. And then I recently published my fantasy debut in this uh, 2021, last year. Oh, um, my the, goodness. The two, well, the two excuse volumes. Me, my friend. I apologize yeah. for that mistake. That's all good. Yeah, How did no the one idea knew, I mean, for ancient illumination come about for you? Well, I was reading a bunch of Star Wars novels at first, and then I decided that was cool, but I, I don't own Star Wars, so I don't want to write anything within that universe. I can't do anything with that. So it came about... Uh, Basically, it's a what if scenario. I thought, you know, back when I was a kid, they were teaching us that there were three forms of matter, gas, solid and liquid. Right. And uh, now I guess they're, they're teaching that plasma is another form of matter, which is kind of all three combined. It's both it's, it's gaseous, solid. It's also liquid and uh, a small unit of light, a photon uh, or a plasma particle is all of those combined. So I was like, well, what if there were organic beings made of pure light? Um, how would that work? And then, so it kind of grew from that idea of, of these beings. And what if we put them on earth to visit us during the days of Cro-Magnon? We were still like caveman status, 68,000 years ago. What would that interaction be like between mankind at that point and these highly evolved beings of pure light that come down to earth to teach us? And that's kind of like the jumping off point of my what if scenario that started the whole ancient illumination and that's also the genesis of the title that I came up ancient and illumination being light so they come to teach us and one of the beings decides that mankind is basically too dumb they're not going to get what they're teaching so he starts experimenting with us and and doing things that are not very nice so the the his people, the beings of light, decide that that's egregious, and as punishment, they take his away away his ability to change into pure light, exile him here on Earth, and force him to enlighten mankind. So, this being is left here on Earth, and we spawn a bunch of different technological advances, and we also create a bunch of different mutations uh, among mankind, more extreme than just skin color. Uh, we mm -hmm. have the Kisan Tantu, which is stone people in Swahili, which basically means that there's an overcalcification of the skin. So that mutation spawns. We have the Limbia Johari, which are walking jewels in Swahili. They have a uh, crystal-like skin, which would be like a crystallization of the sugar compounds in our bodies, but to an extreme till they look like they're made of diamonds or an mm. amethyst hair and stuff like that. So the mutants are, are growing as a result of this being being here and we grow technologically. We fight each other over our differences as we do today, but the differences are more extreme. And the ancient being that is here basically uses that as his entertainment since he's stuck here. He's exiled. Rod, I love your imagination. It's almost as if, you know, when you started this series, this almost like childlike sense of wonder of the possibility with that what if got ignited. I mean, I can already see this as a television series or already a four-part movies, you know, yeah. franchise. Have you thought about it like that? Of ever? course, uh, in the process. And that was the thing. It, it was trying to expand into other mediums, um, which is probably what you were referring to when you said volumes, because the graphic novels are basically 
uh, beginning to write those stories out in the illustrated form. So I started out going to Comic-Con here in Baltimore in 2017. And people would come up to me and be like, yo, that's a cool story, but I'm not about to read a 300 page book. Could you get it illustrated? So I had to go about finding an uh, artist to help me out. And luckily bumped into Jordan Pinnell Jackson a couple years down the line from there at a smaller convention. And we've begun illustrating them out. And yeah, end game for me would be to get a TV or movie deal based on my novels. I've also started the fantasy side of things. So if people like Dragon, Sword and Sorcery. Well, I want to get into like that, that next. We, yeah. In my segment, yeah. now, now Yumbani Chronicles? On, yeah, Yumbani Chronicles are the, are the fan. That, that's the alternate dimension to ancient illumination where the yeah. Orishas are the pantheon of gods and some gods that I've just created for the series that rule over that world. And there's magic, there's elder dragons that awaken because magic has been corrupted and the world has a sickness going through it, all because of a magus that tries to make a deal with kind of a shady God to bring back his lost love. And through that deal with this God, it begins to corrupt mats of land, begins to become sick. And these dragons have evolved to the point where they don't need carnal sustenance. They don't need to go out and feed on animals to sustain themselves. They figured a way to build these crystals that basically give them sustenance through magic. And all they have to do is sleep and hibernate and be near these conduits. And once the magic gets corrupted in the world because of the sickness going on, it disturbs their sleep. They have to wake up and figure out, hey, what the heck is going on? And why is our magic being disturbed? And so they're angry. Because like mankind messed up again. It is doing something. We know that y'all are probably at fault. So that, that kind of starts the chain events within that book. I'm working on the second one for that. But to answer your original question, uh, screenplay is being worked on for an episodic show. Um, simply because I think to be as faithful as possible to the material and give as much depth and breadth to the creators that will come aboard. I think a TV show is probably better. And now with all the options with streaming services, um, and it gives us the, the lateral uh, ability to, to vary whatever material we use to, it could be either animated or live action, depending on what's going on. Everybody knows the shutdowns and everything. If Everybody needs to stay at home, then we can just fully animate it. People can work at home from their computers and uh, do some CGI and 3D rendering. Uh, Unreal Engine looks real cool. And I'm sure there are other software that we could use to make it come to life. We come in and hook up our microphones and do voice acting from a distance. So depending on what goes on, um, I plan to expand into other mediums beyond just the written word and the static illustrated pages as well. Well, Rod Van Blake, your talent is immense. And what you've been able to do over the last six years in creating such an original storyline, multiple storylines, I know for a fact it's going to transcend across all mediums. I want to let our audience know for more on the amazing Rod Van Blake in all of his incredible work, please go to the links below this video. Rod, I'm so excited you're joining this incredible new social media app. Um, over the past year, I've been able to speak with over 100 authors and storytellers from all over the world. And I'm so excited as well that we are now connected. And I'm really appreciative of your time today. Thank you. Appreciate it. Glad to be here.